Well, good evening, everybody. This is Gil Phelan with Grandview Estates in Costa Rica. I wanted to wish you a good evening and thank you for attending. Uh, if you would, I just want to make sure that everything's okay. If you could just write in to uh, my son, Sean, and our partner, Stephen, there, that everything's good. You can see the screen and hear me. I'd appreciate a little feedback to make sure that I have everything set up correctly. I've done six or seven of these, and I still feel like I'm kind of new at it some days. So, uh, and we're just going to wait another minute or two. People are still logging on. We got a bunch of people joining us this evening. So, um, please, if you have any questions, hold them till the end. We're going to make sure that we have a nice question and answer session. I'm going to try to keep it to an hour. Uh, at the most, but I can tell you, the last few we've we've held, you know, there's so much interest and questions and things. Uh, we'll we'll be here for as long as necessary to answer all your questions and concerns. So, jot down some notes of things you'd like answered if I don't cover it during the presentation. Uh, well, let me begin. We've got a whole bunch of people logged on now, so I think it's a good time to start. A Beautiful Balance is the name of the show this evening, and, and I chose that because I really think it is a beautiful balance in many ways. Uh, I mean, number one, if you look at this picture, this was taken up at Grandview, looking out towards the ocean, and you see the rainstorm coming down and the rainbows and everything. That's a real typical scenario, being up here in the mountains. Uh, we get to look down on the different weather patterns. And sometimes you can even see two or three different, you know, it'll be sunny here, and you look around and you'll see a, you know, two or three separate rainstorms scattered throughout your vista. And it's, it's really a beautiful place to be. And uh, I've traveled a lot this year. And I can honestly tell you that every time I come back, I'm, I'm re-impressed with Costa Rica. The, the beauty here is unparalleled. I've been to some pretty neat places. Uh, I mean, Yosemite was awesome in a different way. But, but just the natural beauty and, and the green and the lushness of Costa Rica never fails to impress me, no matter how long I've been here. So I'm going to try to get, you know, keep on each one of these slides for a minute or so and try to keep this flowing and keep you interested. And Sean's on duty, and so is Stephen. Uh, type in any questions that you have, and uh, I'll try to concentrate on my PowerPoint and they will answer questions and if they can't answer them and I need to talk to you later we'll do that. So this is a photo is from Grandview and it's kind of a typical scenario when it's raining. The Caribbean of Costa Rica really has a unique history. I've been I've been trying to do a little bit of deep study uh, and I don't want to take that time up here this evening for sure because uh, time is limited. But if you, if you do some of your own Internet research, I think you'll find that the Caribbean is, is quite unique in many ways. And uh, there's a lot of really neat history, you know, starting back with Columbus. He's the one who, he didn't really name it. One of his engineers ended up naming it, I believe. But, uh, you know, he docked here near Limon and... Um, starting back in the, I think it was 1502, and the Spanish tried to conquer it. And it was just such rugged and crazy country and so steep and jungly that it wasn't worth the, the effort. You know, it was just so difficult to get inland. So it, it really wasn't, uh, it wasn't as exploited as many places that the Spanish did because of its ruggedness. So it, it is an interesting history. I mean, it's really unique in regards to the country and even as far as Costa Rica history in general, the Caribbean has its own unique history. So um, go ahead and get on the internet and you'll, you'll find out some interesting things. This is a typical view from Grandview. We have a, a volcano. It's called Turi Alba Volcano. It's about 35 miles from us and the wind always keeps, there is a plume of smoke coming out, it's an active volcano in that respect, um, so it's, it's letting off its steam, it's not one of those Mount St. Helen types that's going to uh, explode and cause a problem. I would say that some of the farmers who own the land near the top, uh, they, they, they may have some interesting times ahead. 
uh, if a little lava does flow down the side of the mountain. But, you know, that's what Arenal is so famous here for, for uh, Arenal is a beautiful volcano as well, really a little different than, than Turialba, but it's really neat being able to see the, the smoke in the morning and uh, as you can see the cloud formations and stuff. So this is a typical scenario that we have here in Costa Rica and I think that's one of the reasons people fall in love with it. Um, I mean, I, I don't know how you could help but do it, especially the climate is such that it's always green here. You know, there's some parts of the country, uh, especially the northwest portion, that really, really gets dry and dusty and actually has brush fires uh, during the dry season. We don't have that going on here, so it's lush and green all year round. So I think that's something that really impresses people when they come to the Caribbean side of Costa Rica, is just the plain old natural beauty that we have. So this is a scene from uh, Grandview Estates right there looking over towards Turrialba Volcano. Another thing that a lot of people are not aware of is the weather patterns are totally unique here on the Caribbean side of Costa Rica as opposed to the rest of the country. I'm going to put on a little marker here and spotlight a couple of things um, because I know, as you all know, there's a lot of microclimates and, and variations in temperature and rainfall and climate. In general, though, what's, what's the most interesting is this section, which is Limon Province, This section, which is Limon Province, has a totally different weather pattern than the whole rest of the country. This whole rest of the country, more or less, has a six-month wet and six-month dry season. Now, the, the amount of rainfall varies uh, from less up into the hotter, more dry part of Guanacaste. And as you come down along the southern coast, it gets rainier and rainier, and especially down here in, uh, around Golfito. So this whole section of Costa Rica has the similar pattern. Over here, it's unique. If you really want some inside information of, of the details, you can go to our website and we have a pretty neat weather map. It's not ours, it's, it's from the government or something here. And you can tell what parts of the country get the most rainfall. And it's interactive, so you can zip around and look at different things. I'll go to that slide next here. Okay. Give this a second to switch over. Okay, here's the weather map. Uh, now what's interesting here, you'll see, you see the blue is the 240 inches of rain per year or more down to 40 and 60, which is the white. So these are all the different microclimates. Uh, let me, I'll put my little marker on the spotlight here as well. As you can see, like I said, this, this is a very dry area, and in general, you see what happens that between the six-month wet and dry season, when it's wet, it gets more and more rain down here. And I have to point out that uh, lately, you know, where they're talking about putting a new airport in in the southern zone, is more or less around Dominical and Uvita, which is down in here. This is kind of a popular spot. That, that people look at in addition to Grandview Estates. So you can see from the map, they get 120 to 160 inches a year in this blue area along this southern coast, whereas here in Sikiris, where we are, in this, in this microclimate, you see we get 180 or 80 to 120. So our maximum amount of rainfall is the minimum amount along this coast. And you see some of the hot spots here for a lot of rain, 240 inches. Drake Bay gets 160 to 200. Um, and you just see how it's, it's spread apart. Even over here, you just see all the different zones along our Caribbean coast. So it's just quite unique and you can pick different areas. Over here by Turrialba Volcano, I mean the higher you go, the more rain, etc. So it's quite a bit cooler and rainier here than it is here in Securities. So this in general, we are not in Limon. Here's Limon, okay? 
Uh, we are not part of Limon. We're about 25 miles inland and north, so we have this other microclimate that gives us 80 to 120 inches per year. And if you go to our interactive map, you'll see that it's usually July and December are our rainier months. So we don't have a distinct weather pattern six months to six months. And this July was normal. We had quite a bit of rain, uh, and it's starting to dry out again, the transition. Here's the thing people don't realize. Everybody's basing their travel on co in Costa Rica on all this weather pattern. They're talking about the wet, the green season and stuff. The best time of year to enjoy our beaches over in here is September and October. Meanwhile, people think, well, in September and October it's rainy. Yes, in here it is. Here it's not. So keep that in mind if you want to visit shortly. This is our nicest time of the year coming up. Dry, the, the seas are flat, the clarity and the, the, the blue waters are, are awesome. A little delay here as each uh, thing comes up. I try, to, I try to put myself back into the moccasins I was wearing when I was looking where to live in Costa Rica. And, and I'm an average Joe just like everybody else. I, I probably think most of the same questions have a lot of the same concerns. So in general, I've probably done a lot of the same homework that you're thinking of doing and have a lot of the same questions. So this uh, tonight's presentation, as opposed to Costa Rica in general, I think that a lot of my a lot of my people really understand Costa Rica quite well. Actually, more than me in some cases. You know, they know the road numbers and everything else, and I, I don't. Um, so I, I really enjoy that most people are really educated. So I don't have to bring them from ground zero up. That's why I'm concentrating on the Caribbean this evening. Why should you pick the Caribbean? That's a good question. I mean, there's a lot of differences. If you like really hot and dry weather, the northwest part of the country would suit you more. Uh, we have more of a, a pleasant sort of atmosphere and weather pattern all year round. What I love, and I'm from the northeast of, of the states, I live in New Hampshire, New York, Pennsylvania. I really know winters pretty well. And I love the fact that there's no winter here. I love the fact that I can be outside. I went for a walk this morning, and if it rains, so what? You know, it's it's not cold, so you can still take your exercise every day, work out in the garden, work out in the yard, and and all year round. So I think the quality of life that you get here is amplified by the fact that there's no winters, and being on the Caribbean, it's amplified even more because we have a about an 82 degree a temperature every day of the year. I mean, it's incredible. That, that uh, usually, I think my thermometer is broken. You know, I, I got to smack it. I look at it, it's 82, 82, 82. The funny thing is, you get so used to that when it gets to 85 or 86, you're hot. You know, you've really gotten used to the 82 degrees. But uh, so it's 82 degrees during the day, mid 70s at night, more or less. And I'm trying to paint a picture of the Caribbean for you if you've not been here. Um, so I'm pointing out the weather patterns, I'm pointing out the beaches and the best time of year to enjoy them. And really it is all year because it is, uh, I, I've been to, a, I'm, I'm a scuba instructor, so I, I'm really quite familiar with most of the beaches and areas of the country. And I can tell you uh, during the dry season when it's hot and the leaves are off the trees, the Pacific beaches you cannot walk on them. I mean, I was dumb enough. My wife warned me, you know, it's a black sand beach with the sun beating down on it, and I think I can walk across it with bare feet. Uh, it's like a frying pan. Uh, we don't have that. Our beaches are different. They're, they're lush. The, the uh, palm trees come right up to the water. So if you're there with your family or you have some older people in the family that really aren't interested in swimming too much in the ocean, they can plop right down next to, the, next to you at the beach and there's shade because all our trees are green all year. So that's something else that you probably can't pick up too easily by doing internet research, you know. 
uh, unless you've been there and done it, it's, it's, it's just different than reading it. Now, you know Costa Rica is quite a varied place, uh, and, and there's many remote portions of Costa Rica, and part of the beautiful balance I'm trying to point out this evening is not only the, our weather and, and what we can grow and, and how we can be self-sufficient with our own gardens and fruits, but the balance is we're in the, we're in the mountains, so we've got beautiful lush landscape all around, mountain views. You can see the Caribbean out there in the morning about 14 miles distant, uh, monkeys and toucans. But yet the town of Securis, which is here, I'm showing you a Google map of it, is only about 10 minutes away. So, you know, all our shopping is done. Uh, Grand View's over this side. I'll try to use my pointer. And here's Securis. And you see the, the whole town, there's about 30,000 people. So we have four banks, we have grocery stores, hardware stores, computer stores, internet cafes, uh, library, churches, just everything that a, that a bustling town should have. And as you can see from the surrounding area, uh, it's a very agricultural community. We're still the breadbasket here with pineapples and, and uh, bananas and plantains. From what it looks here, you know, the, the green that's, that's right in here, a lot of that's pineapples. So it's an agricultural community and it's spread out and there's a bustling hub in Securities. I'll tell you, one of the biggest differences I've noticed, Costa Rica is a very social place as well. Town, goodness gracious, you go in there and on Fridays and Saturdays, you just have uh, it's unbelievable how many people are around walking and shopping and socializing. Um, I, I came from a small town in PA lastly, and goodness gracious, you, you hardly ever saw a person out on the street, let alone socializing and talking with each other. So that, that's another neat aspect of Costa Rica in general, too. Uh, there, there's a lot more social activity, you know, neighbors talking to each other and hanging out and yapping and the kids playing and... Uh, Although I'm seeing some changes, you know, with, with computers and Internet, uh, people are starting to hibernate here too, but uh, really not quite so much as, as what I've seen in the States where I lived. Um, it's important, right? You're, you're, you're thinking of leaving a lot of familiarity, your, your, your comfort zone. Hey, where am I going to shop? What am I going to do? What's my life going to be like? Those are the questions we ask ourselves. Will I like Costa Rica better? You know, that's something that, it is a very subjective thing, but I think you'd be hard pressed to find a place that didn't have the makings of a beautiful place to live like we do. Um, and I point out to some people, if you're really miserable <laughs> where you're at, you know, you take yourself with you wherever you go. So be careful of that. Maybe you want to do some counseling before you move to get rid of some baggage because, you know, you don't want to drag that stuff with you down here, uh, but in general, there, there's a lot of uh, a lot of factors in this equation here. That if you move down and enjoy this type of natural lifestyle, um, it's, it's it can really be a pleasant daily existence for sure. Uh, here's the the natural beauty. That's the one of the waterfalls we have at Grandview. Actually, that's uh, where I'm standing. Is a lot. Uh, lot 114, actually, that overlooks that waterfall. That's a beautiful lot. Uh, there's a few of my horses that we have. Uh, we have some lots and lots of pasture ground. We've got 640 acres here, and about 250 is the lots themselves. The rest is pasture ground and hiking trails and rivers and jungle. Um, so I would really say that, that, that you've got to be an outdoor lover to, to appreciate us to the fullest, for sure. So there's lots and lots of natural beauty. One thing that I think I may have overlooked, you know, sometimes you get used to things and you don't, you don't see them for what they are because you're just so used to them. But this is a table full of vegetables that you can grow year-round. It's incredible, the, the soil that we have here. I, especially at Grandview, I mean, I, they dig foundations and they you know, do a lot of site preparation, and I don't know where the topsoil ends. It just keeps going and going, So, and it's rich and it's volcanic. You know, in, the, in a lot of places, especially in the States, 
so many of the, the soils are really depleted. Yeah, they're growing some pretty looking tomatoes, but there's literally no nutrients and minerals in the ground being sucked up into the vegetable. So you're, you're eating a pretty product, but there's no nutrition and there's no, there's no health to these vegetables. It's exactly opposite here. Uh, and you can have a, two brown thumbs and, and still be successful growing stuff. Your job here, because of the lushness um, and how easy it is to grow things, your job really is more to stop things growing than to grow them. Now, I didn't grow all this stuff here. Uh, I do go down to the ferreteria or the, um, I shouldn't say that, the pulperia to, to get our, our vegetables. But this is a sampling of what you get for about $25, I believe, I spent on this, this few days' worth of, of groceries. And everything here that you see is easily growable right in your yard. I mean, we've got all the, we've got the pineapples, uh, guanabana makes a beautiful juice. We've got avocados, lemons, limes, um, almonds, plantains, bananas, uh, papaya. Gosh, papaya is a weed here. You can't stop them from growing. Mangoes, uh, different kinds of mangoes. All these things are just part of, of living here. Um, I, I know a lot of times in the States they're talking about how important it is to try to get your, your produce and your groceries bought within 100 miles. So you know they're fresh. They haven't been you know, containerized for three weeks and refrigerated, you can't, you would have to try to get something that was grown further than 100 miles from you here. I mean, everything is growing everywhere. You go down to Securis, you're going to pass six to eight little fruit stands on the road, depending on what's uh, fruiting at that time of year. So, you know, a lot of times the, the, the lady who stays at home, whatever's popping out of the trees that day, she'll set up a little table by the road and and sell her produce right there. You know, we haven't gotten to the point where everybody needs a, a permit to sell lemonade and things like that. You're still allowed to go out on the roadside and sell your produce that you grow. I think that's something that uh, being here at Grandview and the size of our lots are one and a quarter acres. That really means you can have a beautiful building pad and, and guest house and pool and still have lots and lots of room for a huge garden. I tend to like the fruit trees for some reason because vegetable gardening, and I've, I've been a gardener for a lot of years, uh, takes a little bit more work and upkeep, whereas fruit trees are so easy. I don't use any, uh, I don't use any pesticides. on. It's all organic. Everything I grow here on my property is totally organic, and it's not an issue. I, we're, we're not over it. The variety, you know, when you're growing things like that, it's important to have the variety. Monoculture is what causes issues, especially you know, pineapples and stuff. They do have to spray those because monoculture uh, has its own, own set of problems. So when you have a healthy variety of fruits and vegetables and trees, uh, pests aren't really that much of a problem. And hey, you got to share a little bit. So if some of, the, some of the critters eat a couple of apples or whatever, it's no big deal. This is the kind of wildlife that really is normal here, uh, right in my backyard. Um, we have two toad sloths and we have three toad sloths. The two toads that, that's pictured here, they're, they're a little bit nasty. You know, I mean, you, you can play with them a little bit, but uh, I, 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 they can nip you. They'd like to bite a little bit, whereas the three toad are cuter and they're very friendly. I'll show you a picture of that uh, a little bit later on. Uh, howler monkeys. We got them all over the place. I was just hearing them this afternoon on my walk. They're all over the property and up on the mountain, um, especially when it starts raining a little bit. You hear them start hooting and hollering. And uh, actually, our newest residents here, the first day to their house, they pulled up to the garage, and there was a troop of about uh, three or four howlers sitting right above their garage, kind of yelling at everybody to get out of their spot, you know. I don't think we're invading too much. What I'm, what I'm finding is that people are moving here. They're not moving here to not enjoy nature. They're moving here to enjoy it. So there's a real interest in growing all kinds of different fruits and trees and stuff like that that's natural to Costa Rica and attracts wildlife to share. So uh, we've got more wildlife than you can 
than you can use here, believe me. Uh, so I think that's important. What I'm trying to do is build up this, this mental image for you of exactly what the Caribbean is like, because it is different than the rest of the country. And I've been to a lot of places when I first moved here in 2001. I was seriously considered buying something up in northwest Guanacaste at Plaza Hermosa. I really wish I would have because I could have made a lot of money during the boom. Uh, but now that I'm here, I, I don't like that dry season. You do not need air conditioning. You look at these two houses that I'm building right now. Uh, this one on the left is, is not completed yet. We're, we're planning to put two wings on it, and it's going to be about 5,000 square feet. And there's no air conditioning there. We really don't need it. Uh, if, if you build your home properly and you take advantage of the prevailing uh, winds and orient it right so your house is, is swept clean by the breezes all the time, a nice shaded porch is important. It keeps your house cool and you can sit out there and, and, and not need air conditioning. In many parts of the country, that's not true, especially on the Pacific side. So that affects your building. You, you really need more insulation. You need insulated windows or else your uh, air conditioning costs are going to be quite high. So we, we don't have those issues. We, you see the house on the right. We're just finishing that up um, this week. We're, we're putting all custom cabinets in, all custom wood doors, beautiful tile job. Uh, but you can see that's really oriented to catch the breezes and pull it right through the house. So you're never going to have a hot house here at Grandview Estates. Most folks, well, I don't care how old you are anymore. I'm 56 years old now, and I can tell you that uh, I'm living more of a active lifestyle than, than I ever hoped to live. Uh, I've always been active, but you know, in Pennsylvania, by the time you know, by the time I got done chopping my wood for the winter and, and and you get, get through December, gosh, it seemed like January and February were, were kind of really long months. And spring comes in March, and it's really not spring yet. You know, it's, it's definitely into April. Uh, so we don't have those issues. Not that I don't enjoy going back and looking at the foliage and uh, things like that. I'm a hunter as well. But I can go visit and do that. I don't have to live with six months of that. So recreation and, and uh is a very important part of my lifestyle and I mean I think that's the big difference if you're looking at San Jose you're looking at a different thing than most folks look at when they're interested in Grandview uh, if uh, to be honest with you listen it's all subjective some I know some people love San Jose they want to live there God bless them enjoy it I wouldn't live in Costa Rica if I had to I have lived there okay I lived in the Desamparados for a year and, uh, you know, it served my purpose at the time. I was an English teacher for Berlitz. But that's not something I want to do for the rest of my life. I don't like the city life. Uh, I, I love out here with the fresh air. I mean, come on, how much with this green that you see, what kind of oxygen level do we have, right, compared to a city with diesel fumes and, and gas? You know, there's zillions of cars. Come on, it's, it's got to be a healthier lifestyle out here. And uh, that's my son, Sean, over there on the horse. Uh, he's sitting on one of the platforms we have up at Grandview. That's down below us a little bit. But that is part of Grandview where we're at right there. And you overlook the Tortuguero National Park and the Caribbean Plain. And that's my wife and I uh, doing some tuna fishing one time. So we, we definitely like to fish and take advantage of filling the freezer up that way. So I think that's an important thing to remember is that, uh, you know, if you're an active person, boy, we've got an active lifestyle. And, and just the same, if you're a home buddy, at least we have a real quiet uh, place. You've got one and a quarter acres minimum to enjoy, so you can have peace and privacy and just, just chill at the house if you don't want to be running around doing stuff. Uh, as I said, I am a scuba instructor. I love scuba diving, and, and I love spearfishing. On the left side there, that's called a dog pargo. He's got really big teeth on him, too. That's about a 90-pound fish. And actually, we got a couple of them that day. That was the big boy, though. So uh, that was quite exciting. And I do enjoy diving. I don't really get a chance to teach as much as I like. Uh, but if you come on down and you want to learn, I'll tell you what. For tonight's webinar, if you come down, 
I'll throw in a free certification. All you got to do is buy the books. That's a freebie for you. I just enjoy the teaching, and, and there's so many shops along the uh, coast right now. There's just not enough not enough students for me to teach, even for free. So that's something I miss doing. Here's some more shots. Most of these pictures I took myself. This one on the right, uh, one of my clients took when he was here. Uh, he's kind of a professional photographer. So that was our waterfall at the waterfall lot on the right. And we have the great green macaws here. Uh, it, back in the 80s, it was a very endangered bird. And they thought it may go extinct. But there's been a lot of work lately to uh, reintroduce them, to, to breed them. And here in Grandview, I, I've been counting about 36 that are using our property. And, and they, they're usually in pairs, so you see this whole flock, and they're loud. Rosh is just very, very loud bird, but they're beautiful. And the birds here, I mean, a macaw like that, they used to poach them here from Grandview because it's a really good spot for them uh, and, and sell them for five grand. And we definitely put a stop to that once we bought the place. Uh, you know, people come up, hey, you know, if you let us catch some, we'll give you, I mean, we're not interested. So, I mean, with the toucans, the monkeys, the macaws, uh, these macaws will just sit right there in the tree above you now. They're, they're, I mean, they're not completely tame, but they're not afraid of human beings like they used to be here five years ago. So that's kind of neat seeing them on a regular basis. Uh, I hope I gave you a general picture of if you decide you want to live on the Caribbean, why would you do that? Well, we've got the weather, we've got the easy access to town, we've got the easy access to the ocean. It's only 25 minutes away. We've got uh, easy access to literally one million acres of virgin forest is behind us up on the mountain here. Uh, it comes from Securis the whole way down into Panama. So, I mean, any kind of wildlife adventure, any kind of bird watching you're interested in, uh, you know, we've got it going on here for sure. One of the best ways to see this, and I, what I'm calling now, we use, we've always done tours of some sort or another, but what I've found over a period of time is we're not a tour company, and we, we kept some really good pricing, and people would use us, hey, it's a cheap way to, to go look around. Well, that's not what we're here for. Uh, there's some great tour companies uh, to, that do that if you just want to be a tourist. We live here. It's my wife and I. My wife is a Costa Rican. Uh, my son moved down with us. Our partner, Stephen Wise, is here now. Uh, he's a world traveler, you know, lived in Istanbul and Saudi Arabia. And he's got a lot of expat experience as well to share. And when you come and spend the weekend with us, you get, you know, five years of serious investigation on, on how to do things here uh, really at your fingertips. Uh, we've done, you know, moving, we've moved pets, we built homes, uh, residency. Now, we're not lawyers, okay, but we, we can give you the general idea of what you have to do, you know, to set up bank accounts. Uh, we have greased the skids, and, and, and folks, you can't even begin to appreciate it, what it was like five years ago when we started Grandview. The first couple of years, we definitely were just interested in building the infrastructure. We didn't want to have people need to buy a, a lot to build more road and then finally get electricity. We wanted you to be able to come in, buy your lot, and build as soon as you can. So the first two years were more or less building the place, building the roads. We put in six miles of electricity. We're ready to build, and we're building beautiful homes. So. This is not something you have to dream about. Hey, someday the, the project's going to be ready to build. If you want to move, and I, these ladies who just moved down here, they bought a lot a couple years ago. They decided to sell their home. As soon as it sold, they were here in 30 days. And their house is being finished up right now, and, and, and they're very thrilled with that. So we put a lot of the, the uh, really, really hard work is behind us. And one thing that you can't appreciate either until uh, you're here is the reputation that we've built. This is the real Costa Rica, folks. The Caribbean is still the real Costa Rica. This isn't city-fied. This isn't gringoized. We're amongst the real Ticos here. We're, we're, we're part of the culture. We're not separated from anything here. And 
I have to say that when we first came, nah, they, they went, what are these gringos doing? What are these crazy gringos doing, you know? But we've established our reputation. They know we're for real. They, they, you know, it's, it's neat watching our new residents come into town and, and, and meet the people we do business with. And, uh, you know, it's just much, much easier. So you don't have to worry that you're, you're a pioneer. We've done the pioneering part for you. As interesting as it was, I'm glad that part's over. Uh, you know, things are much smoother. We're building beautiful homes with a lot less hassles. So I suggest here, you know, there's the details. I won't read it to you. But the seminar investment tours are a great way to come down. It might be two to four people, maybe five, depending. Uh, but you get our attention the whole weekend. Any questions, any concerns, we show you the whole way around the Caribbean. By the time you leave here, you're going to have a real understanding of what the Caribbean is about and if it's for you. Uh, most people, you know, it's, it's kind of hard not to fall in love with it, but sometimes uh, people come and if they're from L.A. or something, it may be a little bit too green and, and wild. I don't know. Uh, so one of the important things to remember is that pricing here on the Caribbean is still different than a lot of places in, in this country. Because when we moved here, when we bought the property, believe me, people said we were crazy. Nobody's ever going to buy anything. But that was the feeling of the whole country. Even people who've been here for years, live here, the Ticos, they don't, they, you know, they didn't come to the Caribbean because there wasn't a road here 20 years ago. You needed to take a train and a bus, and it was a three-day affair. Who's going to do that when they could just take the main road over to, to Punta Arenas or Jaco in, in two or three hours, right? So now it's becoming discovered, and, and I'm going to show you here in a second some of the some of the huge projects that are that are going on that that makes it a great investment. I'm, I'm sure if you guys have been getting my emails over time, uh, you've seen some of this stuff. Uh, and actually, I just talked to the general manager of this project uh, yesterday all their people that are moving here, especially the mid-level managers and things like that, uh, that need a place to live um, and have, you know, maybe a little bit more means than the average, than the average dock worker. Uh, Grandview is just an awesome place for, to, to, it's only 25 minutes from the port of Moline. So this is a $1 billion investment in the area. Thousands, literally thousands of new jobs. Imagine, folks, what happens to an area that, that has something like this going on, you know, a, a thousand jobs. Well, those folks need everything, right? They need clothes, they need food, they need housing, they need entertainment. Good Lord, what kind of uh, uh, business opportunities are here? So you don't have to move here in the Caribbean just to retire and do nothing. If, if you're 35 years old and you're tired of what's going on in the States, listen, I don't know, I'm, I, I look at the States and think, if I'm going to start a business, what would I do? I, I really don't know. I'm sure I'd figure something out. But here, the opportunities are endless in reality. Uh, I've never been anywhere. Like I said, this last year, I've been all over the place. And there's no place in Costa Rica or anywhere in the world that's putting the kind of growth into a 20-mile radius like we have. What does that do to your real estate values? Okay. Besides having a, a great self-sufficient lifestyle and a, and a great daily uh, place to live, isn't it nice to know that the land you're investing in is actually going to go up, not be cut in half? I mean, you know, it's a great thing for some people in the States to take advantage of the low prices, but, you know, when I invest in something, I want to see it go up in value, not go down. And come on, I, I don't have to tell you this. If, you, if you're looking around and you're doing your homework, you can understand that uh, this area is a place that's going to drive real estate values up. We've got a new free trade zone only 10 miles from here. They're looking for uh, companies to come in and start businesses, uh, manufacturing, production, whatever, because they're going to be hiring locals. So they give you some great tax incentives right off the bat. So if you want to start a business, folks, we've got, we've got opportunities and we've got tax incentives and everything else. Here on the Caribbean, this isn't going on anywhere else. It's not going on in San Jose. It's not going on on the Pacific side. Um, this is more opportunity for a great place to live and a great place to do some business, if you like. Uh, 
hydro project. That's five miles from us. Uh, they're going to be, this is another billion dollar project, hundreds and hundreds of jobs. I can't find help that I need. I need some other help, some house cleaning and things like that. This hydroelectric project has sucked up all the local labor. So that, that's the kind of stuff that's going on here. And I'm not going to bore you with reading it, but just to give you an overview of that's what's going on. Another bit, here's the, the third of the three billion dollar projects. Uh, Costa Rica processes their own oil into gasoline. They have a refinery. And that's what Moeen does. You know, they bring these, some of the, some of the, uh, some of the ships come in full of oil. They put it to the refinery and they refine gas out of it. Well, the, the plant is really getting old. So the Chinese are coming in and they're putting a billion dollars into re, the, redoing the refinery. Part of all this restructuring is the two-lane highway in front of Grandview, the main road, Route 32, is going to be uh, increased to four lanes. And we need it, folks. If there's one negative, look, every place you live has positive negatives. I can tell you, in general, I'm happy with everything here. The one thing that bothers me is the roads are too busy. You know, when you get an economy that's jumping like we have here, you know, trucks and cars and, you know, the traffic's bad. Thank God they're going to rebuild our, our uh, road to four lanes. So now you're going to be able to get to the beach in 20 minutes probably. And guess what? Look at all the business. We've got tens of thousands of cars coming by our, our road. If you, We have a commercial center down here with offices. If you want to start a business right here, we, you can't get a better uh, traffic count than we have right in front of our office. Uh, you know, people are asking about employment opportunities. I would say your opportunities here are more as a business owner. Don't come down here. Hey, if you want to work for, for our crew up here building homes, we're going to give you about uh, two bucks an hour as a laborer, okay? So Costa Rica is still, that's one of our advantages. We can build things. Materials are pretty expensive, but our labor is still cheap. So don't, don't really think of coming down here working for somebody at the moment. Uh, bring your entrepreneurial spirit down, and I think you'll, you'll have more opportunity. Uh, I'm going to try to pick the pace of this up a little bit so we can make sure to answer questions. Uh, here's just some of my off-the-top-of-my-head ideas of, of what's going on here. Uh, the free trade zone that we talked about, it's, uh, I believe, 100000 bucks. You get all those tax incentives to open up a business. Right here at Grandview, we have horse stables. Uh, the, the cruise ship port is also part of the restructuring. We have 25 ships coming in a month on average at the moment, and they're looking for about 100 per month in the future. Being 20 minutes for you guys who've been on cruises, understand the cruise ship comes in, people want to do stuff. They get off, they get onto a bus, get, you know, get onto something, and they travel to do something fun. We've got it all going on here, you know, zip lines and, and rafting. So the, the stables we have here are a perfect opportunity to have horseback riding, rodeos, uh, whatever you can dream of. Uh, you can start bird watching business. I mean, good Lord, we've got a million acres of, of wilderness behind us. Uh, so all kinds of opportunities here. Uh, use our commercial center to capture some of those tens of thousands of people that are across the, the, the road here. Pastry and coffee shop. Internet cafes here are, are a big thing because not everybody has computers. Uh, so the locals like to come and give you so much per hour and run an internet cafe. So you can sell food. You can teach English at night. Listen, teaching English is a wonderful job here. Uh, you don't have to be, be certified with a degree. You can just start your own business for conversational English where you don't give somebody a degree. They just, look, these people want to learn how to speak English uh, in a business sense especially. So you could cater to professionals here and teach your own English. Uh, yoga, the Caribbean's just famous for its climate and, and uh, yoga facilities. So uh, I think I've covered some of these. We've been on here for about 42 minutes. So I'm going to try to wrap up some of the questions. And I'm going to promise you I'll get to some pricing and, and uh, stuff here at Grandview Estates. But let me answer questions to see if you even want to be here. The roads from San Jose are perfect, and they're getting better all the time. So our roads go into four lanes. Hospitals, yeah, healthcare is important. They're building a brand new hospital in Securities. 
already there's a clinic with doctors and ambulances and the local hospital is about 20 minutes away that's run by the, the state, it's the regional hospital. Uh, right now you fly into San Jose uh, and it takes you about an hour and a half, two hours depending on traffic to get here, but Limon is an international airport and they're expanding that as well. So in the future I guarantee you that you're going to be able to fly in um, be about 20 minutes from the project. Right now you can take puddle jumpers, so if you come into San Jose you can get on a smaller plane and come right out to Limon. Or if you have your own plane, you can fly right into the airports that are at all the banana plantations. Uh, so the new port's about 20, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and that, that many miles away. Uh, concern about smelling of gas and oil. No, I've, no we're, we're 14 miles as the crow flies, so uh, even when I'm down, down around the refineries, I don't smell anything. We have 10 completed homes and about 8 full-time residents right now, and it's not just for investors. Uh, people are living here full-time, retiring, uh, but there's a good mix. There's people holding on to lots to resell them, building small homes to uh, rent out while they're not here, etc., and we, we do manage the rentals for you as well. Square foot building price is about... 70 to 85 a square foot depending on the fit and finish and, and style of home. Uh, I'm not sure, the, I, I just cut and pasted some of these questions folks sent me, so I'm not sure what the offshore territory for business means. Uh, tax is about 13 percent, so if you go to the uh, restaurants it's 13 percent tax. Closing cost is approximately 3.5 percent and the buyer pays the closing cost. Um, does the Caribbean have condo buildings? Mm, not that I'm aware of. Uh, we're really the, the only true project that I'm aware of on the Caribbean. So uh, lots of private houses, but I'm sure with all the growth. And, and I didn't even mention the, uh, the marina that they have planned, the 500 slip marina. It's going to be the, one of the three mega marinas in the world is coming into Moine as well. So, of course, that they're going to have condos and hotels and restaurants and all that stuff. Uh, shopping and all that we covered already in highways. Uh, guns and shooting. I mean, we got all kinds of land up here. You can practice all you want. Just go through the hoops to get your, uh, to get your proper uh, papers on guns, and you can bring in firearms. It's no problem. You do have to be a resident and pass a test to, to have a concealed permit, though. Not a big deal, though. Uh, yeah, you can be an absentee landlord, for sure. Uh, you know, the HOA restrictions, we're, we're, we're really putting together a new set of CCNRs, and I, we really don't want to encourage one-night people. Yeah, this isn't a hotel. We have to make sure that the residents here are secure. So there's going to be a, a real push to have uh, longer-term rentals and possibly some background checks on people that you want to bring in just to make sure that our community stays safe. I think that's kind of normal stuff in a, in a development these days. Uh, we, do, we do the property management for you. Uh, typically we charge 20% right now because it's just, uh, it's, you know, it's not that huge of a business where 8 to 10% it would be worth doing. So uh, the climate we've talked about, uh, get to the airport's easy. You can leave your car here and take a. Uh, there's a taxi for 39 bucks called Interbus. It takes you right into right into the airport. It's easy. Uh, HOA fees are 50 dollars a month for a lot only 125 once you build a home. Uh, taxes. You know I'm not a tax accountant, so that's really something I want to leave to that. But in general, uh, if you make if you have a business here like I do you are allowed to make approximately $92,000 before you owe U.S. taxes. You still have to file, but you don't owe money until you get over the $92,000 mark. But, of course, as a business, you're paying Costa Rica taxes, so that's going to vary. And it's the same procedure, right? It's your job to keep as much as you can and their job to take it. So, you know, you get an account and you go through pretty much the same thing. Um, departure tax is $26 bucks a time you leave. You know, the disabled part, that's something that you have to remember, folks. Not only are we the real part of Costa Rica, uh, the way it's always been, but it's almost like going back in time 20 to 30 years. 
everything, believe me, is changing for the better, uh, and the disability uh, accommodations are, are definitely coming up. But you'd, you'd be a little bit, you have to be a little rigorous here to to do it. I, I can't say that everywhere you go in securities has ramps and things like that yet. Plenty of medical uh, hospitals, clinics. Uh, if you want to go to San Jose for the bigger private hospitals or do it local, it's not a problem. Uh, can you own real estate and be a visitor for six months a year? Uh, well, you can own real estate and visit whatever you want. It's a 90-day visa, so you can come and go as you like. Cost of lots, uh, we're going to cover here in a second. Uh, restriction of usage, well, we don't want uh, uh, hotels and things like that. Uh, we already covered the health care and road quality. Okay, let's get how many minutes? we got 50 minutes here. Uh, here's a map coming up of phase four. We've sold out, folks, in basically three years. As I mentioned, we, we took the first couple of years doing the infrastructure. Uh, and once that was ready, we really concentrated on sales. We had 80 lots in the first three phases, and most of those are sold. We, have, we had a couple come back. Uh, some folks are going to try to finance or, you know how that goes, and then some of those fall through. So there are a couple lots left, but in general, those were all sold. That's why we started into phase four. And out of the 42 lots that we started with back about six months ago, we sold four. We still have 38. So there's quite a great selection. In general, I, I hope you guys, I can't see this. I can see my spotlight on here. I'm, I, I hope you can. If somebody give me feedback on that, I'd like that. There's a red dot that I'm pushing around here. Uh, phase four is, is this front part from lots 80 down to 91, et cetera, where pasture ground for the most part. So the, the cattle and sheep that used to be here kept all this more or less clean. The mature trees are more down around the streams. Folks, all our lots almost, except four of them, have stream frontage. That's awesome. You know, I take that for granted. But you go down to these streams and they're gorgeous. So the front part is more open and views. You have views for especially lot 87 and 89. In general, over to the northeast is the Caribbean. You have the mountains in back of you here. And then you've got Turrialba Volcano in the other direction. So this is a little bit more open and viewed. Whereas Vista Verde section, 92 down through 100, et cetera, uh, is really just pure woods. You've got beautiful streams. You have total woods. You go in there and you sculpt this lot out uh, as you like. So it's, it's a kind of a blank slate is what I like to call it. So that's where we're at now. We have 38 lots in general, folks. Uh, here's the uh, phase four pricing. Don't study this too much at the moment uh, because there's some discounts that, I, that I'm putting out there. Uh, but what I like to point out is on the right side, this is, your, this is a good way to, when you're looking on the internet at other projects, what is, what is the square meter pricing? Be careful, folks. I see so many advertisers, hey, here's your lot for you know, $19,000. Here's a lot for $29,000. Well, yeah. It's only an eighth of an acre, okay? So you're going to be, you know, watching your, your neighbor in their kitchen. Uh, the real thing to look at is how much per meter square. So on average, at full list price, we're right around $15 more or less. As you can see, there's 14, 17, some of the more premium lots with just killer views and the waterfall or more. But in general, you can figure $15 a square meter. And I can tell you that the, the locals are selling for more than we are. We bought five years ago. Uh, we've got millions of dollars invested here, folks. This isn't just a piece of jungle when you come. You're going to see a, a, a real a growing community with roads and electricity and lakes and streams. Uh, so this $15 a square meter, when you're doing your homework, is pretty darn good. Now, we have two specials this evening. I'm affiliated, of course, you know, with International Living. I go to most all of their shows. We did uh, Cancun this year, the Dominican Republic. We have a Costa Rica show in November. So if you want to come down, 
uh, for that, please let me know. We're going to have a tour before and after the show as well. So with Pathfinder, if you're a Pathfinder uh, customer, uh, I'm going to give you a 10% discount. So these are just, these lots that I'm showing here, folks, are ones I would pick that they have some really nice attributes. You know, you have 38 lots. We're not Kansas where everything's square and cut up and cookie cutter and exactly the same. Every lot's different. Every lot's unique. My subjective opinion, I could go through all those 38 lots and rate from 1 to 38, okay? What I try to do is, as we sell, and this is what I've done the whole way through phase 1 and 3, okay, what's the next best lot with my subjective opinion? Now we're in phase 4, you have two sections. You have the Vista Verde and you have the, the more open. So I try to guide you which one you may like. So I have a little mixture here uh, of all of them. Uh, lot 98, 100. See how large uh, Lot 100 is. It's uh, 2.3 acres. So with your 10% discount, folks, this is the pricing of those lots. Now, I think the best thing to do is, uh, you know, if you're in a, international living folks, you're familiar with Ronan McMahon's uh, Real Estate Trend Alert program. Uh, you know, Ronan's a great guy. I'm telling you folks, Margaret and Ronan, this is what their life is. They spend so much time traveling and talking. Everything that they tell you is boots on the ground information. So I think it's a valuable resource for me and everybody else. Look, I'm looking. You know, when they're talking about uh, Italy and things like that and Spain and Ireland, good. Some of the great deals near. As an investor, REIT is a great place to be. Uh, so we have such a great rapport with them and they help me so much. If you're a REIT member, I'm going to give you a 20% discount. Now, it only costs $4.99 to join. So figure it out. If you spend $4.99 and you get an extra 10% discount, it's well worth it. Uh, lot 98 at a 20% discount is only $60,692. And that's 1.34 acres. I mean, it's a huge lot, beautiful stream frontage. Actually, it's got some potential for views. One of the issues I have with the green section is it's so wooded until you clear something out and situate it the way you want, it'd be hard to tell exactly uh, what kind of views that you have. So there's still some great deals here on the Caribbean side. What I'd like to point out too for the show, typically uh, if I'm going to offer financing, it's usually just for uh, somebody paying the full list price. But you're on this webinar this evening, so I decided that I'm going to also offer you financing. I'm going to give you the discount plus financing. Some of the categories we have, uh, two-year interest-free, and I won't read every word. You can, you can look at this yourself. 50% um, down, 40%, 30%. If you're looking at monthlies, okay, what I, uh, I, like I said, I'm an average Joe, and it's always, hey, does this fit into my monthly budget? I think that's important for a lot of people, especially if this is something you want to invest in now, uh, pay for a while, and if you're moving in five or ten years, then it'll be done, right? So you want to keep your monthly uh, burden as low as possible. Because Stephen and I are the owners, we can do the in-house financing, and we're at the age, hey, if I have a nice income for the next 15 years on a monthly program, that's fine. You know, I'm just fine with that. So I tried to make it really comfortable for folks to, uh, to finance. So for tonight, I'll give you the discount and you can finance. Let me give you an example of what that could mean. I'll just give you one lot because you guys can uh, figure it out yourself on the other lots. Uh, for lot 98, for example, the 20% discount, you need to put a 30% deposit, which would be 18207 uh, that would bring your monthly investment to only $382 a month. And the way I looked at this when we're putting the program together is, if you're going to, if you're going to have difficulty paying $382 a month, you're probably not going to be doing much in Costa Rica investing anyway. So I wanted to get this down into the budget of just the average person who may be coming down here on Social Security and needs to have a nice monthly payment. 
I can't make it any easier, folks. Um, I, I really can't. Uh, if this doesn't fit, there's probably not much I can do for you. So between the discount and the financing, I hope that uh, I hope that piques your interest. I hope you uh, contact me some more, and we can go over some different numbers or different lots, and I can help you pick them. I have, lot 100 is incredible. Uh, if you see if you see the uh, video, and I'll send that out as well. If you see the video that I have, a lot 100, it doesn't get any better than that. I mean, it's one of the most beautiful scenes. The 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 streams and the butterflies and the the, the beautiful huge trees that are on it are incredible. Um, here's a couple links, and I'm going to be sending this out to everybody. I have a recorded version. You're going to be getting all of this. So the links, the pricing, everything will be coming to you either tomorrow or the next day. Uh, just a couple of, let me see where I'm at in my program here. Okay, well, let me, I'll leave it on the contact info, and I'm going to ask or answer just a couple more questions. I see most folks are still on. So uh, hopefully I was useful. Hopefully I gave you some information that you didn't know before. And more than that, I wanted to paint a picture if, the best I can with my photographs, with my life experience here. I hope, I hope you can tell that I like it here, and I think you will too. And, but there are important things, right? I mean, you could like a lot of places, but it doesn't have something that uh, would keep you comfortable. So we have more questions about uh, Costa Rica versus Ecuador, for example. That's subjective as heck. Let me give you my impression. I've been to Ecuador. Overall, what the main difference I felt, I'm not used to seeing an army hanging around. Costa Rican hasn't had one for since 1948. So when I see military on the on the streets with machine guns, I see them doing traffic checks. Uh, I talk to the taxi drivers, and they tell me that coups are just like a natural part of life there. Mm, I'm uncomfortable after being in Costa Rica all this time. Okay. That's my subjective opinion. You may go there and love the heck out of it. Uh, I think price-wise, Ecuador could probably be cheaper that way. But actually, I have an owner of a lot here that went to uh, that went to Ecuador to live, and she doesn't like it at all. So she's moving back. Uh, Medicare, uh, that's not something that's really uh, looked at completely yet. There are U.S. programs that I'm aware of. I know San Diego is trying it, and listen, it only makes sense for the United States. Uh, it's cheaper for medical care here, so why shouldn't, the, and it's great medical care, so why shouldn't the United States save money and let you use Medicare or Medicare dollars here? That's something that's changing, but actually with the cost of things here, you can come down and pay cash for stuff, okay? Uh, I could go on and on with that. Maybe we'll do, a, do another webinar on that someday. Hospitals are as good as you can possibly imagine. I love the Clinic of Biblica is my favorite. Not that I have a favorite hospital, but unfortunately I've had to go with my family members. Uh, yeah, it's amazing. Okay, I've had different experiences in the States where you, you belong to an HMO and they put you off for three months for an appointment and you see a physician's assistant. That doesn't happen here. You walk, it's amazing. You walk into the to the hospital, you walk up to the nurse's section, hey, I need to, I, need, I think I got a heart problem. They send you over and get an EKG in about 20 minutes. Okay, that's the differences, you see. And it's all socialized, you know. It is socialized medicine here, but it works. So you don't have to worry about medical care. I mean, you know, you're always free to, to go back to the States if you have something that you're comfortable with and you have those programs. You can go back and take care of it there if that's what you like. Uh, taxes are nothing. Uh, basically, it's taxes on homes are 0.25%. Uh, point, it's one quarter of 1%. So, you know, you have a $200,000 property, you're paying three dollars to $400 a year. My home that I'm living in now, uh, actually my taxes quadrupled. I rebuilt and I assessed it differently. So it went from, well, it went all the way up to $130 a year. That's what my home taxes are. Residency, there's all kinds of different levels. Pensionado is the easiest. If you have an income of 1000 per person, it's a piece of cake to get the residency. There's investors' residencies. There's all kinds. Uh, you, you, you really need to look into that to see which one fits you best. But there's lots of options. 
Humidity? That's a good question because I don't know what the humidity is here. Uh, I lived in West Palm Beach, Florida, and I can tell you the humidity there was killer. I mean, by 4 o'clock I was dead. I had to go into my air conditioning and lay down after work. You don't have that here. So is it more humid than a lot of places in the States or Canada? Most likely, but it's also better for your skin, and uh, believe me, you get used to it. But I, I don't think it's nothing crazy is my point. Sewers. I have a question here about sewers. Well, everything is an on-lot septic system, uh, and that's part of the build price. And if you break it down, it's like fifteen hundred bucks to put in a septic system, as opposed to fifteen grand, which is quite normal in the states. Solar and wind power is a question. Um, I mean, it's here. I see solar power. But up until this point, I have to say, electricity is getting more expensive. Uh, but it's always been cheap enough where people weren't really looking at, at those options because electricity wasn't a big deal. Um, here at Grandview, without air conditioning, without heat, you know, you run some fans and you keep your windows open. Uh, I use a gas stove, so your electric bill might be you know, 100 bucks a month or something like that. So if you, if you think it makes sense to do a solar system or wind power, or you just want to do it for fun, uh, you, you could probably do it. Not so much wind, though. We don't have a lot of wind at Grandview. Solar would be the better option. Uh, anyway, folks, let's see where we're at. Gosh, an hour and four minutes is pretty good. Uh, I think I covered most of what I wanted to. I'm not sure I covered what you wanted me to. So I'm going to just stick around here for uh, five minutes and... Anything that pops in your head, please write in. Sean and Stephen are taking care of handing me some of these questions. Uh, if something I haven't answered, let me know. I will be sending this out to you as a recording. Some of the lots that I mentioned, let me go back here. Uh, i got to tell you, folks, if I was going to pick a lot that I really like, that's a great layout with a great stream and the best price that we have at Grandview, and you can finance it, it would be lot 98. Next to that one, I'm in love with lot 100. The person who buys lot 100 is going to have one of our coolest lots here at Grandview. We've got some really open lots that are actually kind of pricey uh, with, the, with the more views. But folks, we've only got 38 lots left and like three or four of them would be, would be rated as the best views. So naturally, they're going to be more money. Oh, I just had McAfee start in the middle of this. Let me shut that off. That's interesting. I wanted to scan my computer. Anyway, lot 100, folks, uh, $104,000 for two and a half acres. You're not going to get a prettier lot anywhere. I'm going to send a link that's going to show you lot 100, so you'll see what I mean. Uh, and the other two lots I listed as well. Lot 117, I want to point out one thing about that. It uh, abuts the waterfall. Now, you don't get a waterfall view, but it runs from, let me, let me back up here and put the, okay. Lot 117, right here red spotlight. I hope you can see that. Lot 117 is right there. Here is our waterfall. You don't get a direct view of it uh, because obviously it runs downhill from here, but you're always hearing it. So it's just a neat, you know how, uh, how nice it is here in running water. You always hear that, that uh, waterfall there and it's actually a butcher property. We have a road that's uh, an easement. This is an easement so everybody can enjoy the waterfall. And you just walk right down, you'd be at the waterfall and swimming in there whenever you want. No need to be to build the pool. Uh, so that's an awesome lot. Lot 100 is down here. Um, you can see where lot 100 is. And what I like about lot 100 the best is at the top part where the natural place for your house would be, it's a very gradual, easy slope down to the stream. It's not, now it's, it's definitely a, 
if you go directly from there to the stream at the right, it's, it's more steep. But the whole property itself is a gradual, so you can have a beautiful trail going right down through the center of your lot, and you're surrounded by streams. So you're always hearing the, the water running year-round. And these streams are running year-round. Uh, lot 95 is awesome. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to point out those two. Uh, my pick would be Lot 98 here for its location and setup and price, and Lot 100 is just a beautiful spot. So I'll shut up if I can, and I'll give you a few minutes to write in a question, and we'll wrap this up in five minutes. Folks, I had a question here a second ago, and it was a, a good one, about bugs. That's important. Uh, all I can tell you is it amazes me that as green and lush and full of everything that you have here, that we're not eaten alive by bugs. I can tell you that when I lived in Pennsylvania, we had a thousand times more flies and mosquitoes, and especially during the springtime, right? Of course, not in winter, but... Uh, I would, I would put it in this way. If you're right down by the stream, yeah, you could definitely get some more bugs. As long as you're careful about cleaning out around your house, you know, get some sunlight in so it's just not pure, humid jungle. You know, you want to clear your lot out around your house, bring some sunlight in, get some breezes in. Bugs are not a huge issue. You'll sit on your porch at night. Now, maybe a lot of you folks can relate to this. If you're sitting on your porch at night outside with the light on, some places I've lived, you'd probably count two, three hundred bugs sipping around that light. Here there's two or three. That, that's probably the best way I can describe it. Plus, when you're driving down the road, you know, your, your cars here are not full of bugs on the headlights and windshield. So, I don't know. I guess it, it could be because of the, the, um, the birds and the bats and stuff that eat them all. That's my best guess. And we had another uh, question about solar power. Uh, it's, it's definitely possible, but is it cost effective? I'm not so sure yet with the price of electricity. Down the road it may be. So anyway, I, I'm pretty much going to wrap it up. Um, I'll give another minute. How about the tour agenda? Tour agenda? Okay. Uh, and our, okay, let me fill you in on our tour. Um, basically what I'm doing is charging Strictly for the for the vans, I don't do my driving. I want to be with you and, and showing you around. So I rent vans. I include the hotel. Basically, they're set up to come in on a Thursday. So if there's one or two couples, I like you to come in. I pay to have you picked up at the airport and brought to the Hotel Bougainvillea. Beautiful hotel, just awesome gardens and very very nice place to stay. So you get your travel done. If there's any delays, you know I'm not there trying to figure it out. You get over to hotel when you're ready. That's part of the, 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 the cost of $5.99 a, per, a couple. Um, you stay at the hotel. I meet you at Friday morning. We come out to the, to the Grandview. There's a couple different routes we may take. Uh, show you around Grandview in the afternoon. We have a beautiful guest house here uh, with a pool, and we cook all your meals. So all the meals are included, a little bit of beer and wine. The next day, uh, Saturday, uh, we're going to go down to the Caribbean. We're going to look at Limon. We're going to see the Port of Moline, all that area, all the hustle and bustle there, uh, and go to one of the local beaches, Plaja Bonita, give you a real overview of the, of the whole side of the Caribbean. And then uh, Sunday, you get taken back into San Jose. So believe me, by, by those two and three days, you're going to have a very, very good picture of, of about. And like I said, the price of it's $5.99 really only is the, the price of the transportation and hotels and cooking the meals. So I, I can't make it any cheaper to take a great look at the Caribbean.
Okay, folks. Any questions you have? I'll go back here. I'm going to send this out tomorrow. You're going to get my contact information, and if you want to reserve a lot this evening, I would highly recommend if you're interested in lot 98 to give me a call because with all the people on this program, I'm sure somebody will be interested. So, uh, what I usually do on these webinars is because everything's trackable through email and the times, the first person who tells me they're interested will have priority. So, if you're interested, Gil Phelan, G I L L P H E L A N at gvecr.com. Let me know what you're interested in or any other questions. Okay. Oh, another important question the, coming in. The Rita information. Oh, okay. There's the Rita link. Oh, I've got to go back. Uh, here's the Rita link, and I'm sure you can get to it by going to International Living in San Rita if you want to get on there right away. You can you can join us at any time. You don't have to be a member yet. You don't have to be a member tomorrow. If you're interested in buying a lot and getting the Rita discount, no problem. As long as you join up before we close the, the sale, that's fine and dandy. Uh, Ronan's fine with that. So that's definitely the way for the $4.99 to get. Let me figure that out on the lot. It's like $6,000, if my mind is working correctly, uh, for $499. So that's a pretty good deal. So you will be getting that link. If you want to do something right away, just go to International Living and you can look up the read information. So uh, we've still got lots of folks hanging in there. Thank you very much for joining me. It's really because of all you folks out there that uh, are making my life great down here. And uh, the folks who are moving down, it's just a wonderful thing to be able to share what we have. So if interested, uh, put a deposit down this evening or tomorrow or get one of our tours going and we'll talk to you later. Thank you very much and God bless everyone.